Okay, so today we're going to be going over a more formal definition of what a limit is. Okay, and it's going to be called the epsilon delta limit definition. Okay, I'm going to go more over what these uh, these variables are, but it's just Greek letters epsilon and uh, delta. Okay, so so far we've gone against the, we've gone over the limit notation, the limit of f of x as x gets infinite, infinitesimally closer to c equals the limit. Okay, I'm going to kind of write this a little bit different right underneath here where it says as x gets closer to c, infinitesimally closer to c, f of x gets infinitesimally closer to l. Okay, these two things are the same thing, it's just written a little bit differently. Now the reason I wrote it like this is because it really helps with our limit definition, which we're going to go over right now. To prove a limit exists, and that's basically what this is doing, you, you need to prove that x as x gets closer to c, f of x is getting closer to l. This is it's written right here. You need to prove this. Okay, so we need to figure out how to how to show the x the, the the value of how close x is to c and the value of how close f of x is to l. Okay, so if I want to know how close two numbers are, well, that's real simple. You just subtract them. So if I want to know how close x is to c, I can just write x minus c. Okay, and then same thing with f of x and l. Let me show. I could just subtract the two. F of x minus L, okay? The one issue with this is if the X is smaller than the C, then you're gonna have a negative closeness, which technically you can use, you can have negative closeness, but it's easier just to make them all positive, so I'm just gonna do some absolute value brackets to show that the closeness is always gonna be positive. So if you know how close two numbers are, it'll always just come out positive. Yes, you can do negative, but it's just easier to do it this way, okay? I'm gonna show you why. So based on this right here, as X gets closer to C, and f of x gets closer to l. I'm going to do the same thing over here, only since I changed the notation here, I have to add some words here. So basically I'm going to write as the absolute value of x minus c gets smaller, that means they're getting closer together. If, the, if x minus c is getting smaller, that means these values are getting closer and closer to the same value. Okay, that, make, that should make sense. So as x minus c gets smaller, then f of x minus l should also Get smaller. Come on right here. Gets smaller. Okay? So this is just the same thing written over here, only I'm just kind of making it a little bit more mathy where I'm subtracting them and the value is getting smaller. Okay? Now, rather than keeping it as x minus c getting smaller, yeah, that sounds mathematical, but we're going to make it even more mathematical. So let's go further down the rabbit hole. I'm going to write x minus c this value up right here. And this time I'm going to actually give it a variable. And the variable that I'm going to give it is this delta. And this value, this smallerness, has to, how small, how close these are, I think it's getting smaller here, has to be less than delta. Okay? It has to be smaller than this variable delta. So now just think, every time you see delta, just think it's the closeness of x and c. The closeness of x and c. Okay? Now based on our definition over here, X is getting closer to C, but it's never actually becoming C. So what I'm going to do is write X can never be equal to C. Okay? Another way of doing that is that if these were ever equal, it'd be equal to zero. So since it can't be equal, it can't be equal to zero, I'm just going to say that this X minus C has to be greater than zero. I'm going to put a little greater than zero. So next, I'm going to do the same thing with this F of X and this L over here. So F of X minus L, remember this is how close these two values are to each other, has to be smaller than epsilon. Okay, so we're going to use this other variable right here. It has to be smaller than epsilon. Next, based on all of this, we can come up with a definition, a definition that can be used as a proof for what the limit is. Okay, basically what we're saying is if epsilon is greater than zero, then delta has to exist and be greater than zero as well. Such that such that so you, you have we have so far such that this right here If zero is less than 
how close x and c are to each other, which is smaller than delta, then the closeness between f of x and its limit is less than epsilon. So basically, just moving what's over here, down here, into a formalized definition. So this right here is going to be your definition for a limit based on this up here. Okay? So if you have any questions about that, let me know. We're going to use this to prove other limits, and that's going to actually be in the next video. I'm going to actually go over an entire worked example of how to use this to prove that a limit exists or not. If you have any questions, let me know.